Ben Washburn joins me now to discuss the big trade in Major League Lacrosse as Casey Powell and Joe Walters are swapping places. Joe Walters joining the Chesapeake Bayhawks and Casey Powell becoming a member of the Florida Launch. Uh, Evan, let's start with the Joe Walters angle of this as, as he joins an already stacked roster in Chesapeake. Uh, thoughts on Joe Walters fitting in with the Bayhawks? Well, I, honestly, I think it's a, a fantastic move for Dave Cotto and company to be able to bring in a player of Joe Walters caliber uh, to Annapolis. He, in my opinion, is the best player each year that no one seems to talk about, albeit he is an all-star, but he never seems to push through to that real MVP-type conversation, especially now with the emergence of guys like Paul Rabel and Rob Pinnell and Ed Crotty. But all he does is really just average about 40 points a season, and his hybrid ability to play attack, midfield, the Canadian game, the American game, um, he's very, very uh, talented player. And, and I think he will fit in very nicely in Annapolis in that same regard because he's got a game that he can change to work best with the players around him. So, I mean, the initial thought is how does Chesapeake just keep getting that much better after winning a second championship? And the thing that's intriguing to me is I remember asking Dave Cottle immediately after that championship win at PPL Park and outside of Philadelphia, I said, what are you going to do with all of these older veterans that have played so well for you? Uh, John Grant Jr. was the MVP, and Powell showed that he still had a lot of legs there late in the season, but the obvious roster implications. And what he's done is he's traded them away for better, younger players. So, uh, you said, and John Grant Jr. traded for Brendan Mundorf earlier, and now Joe Walters joining the fold. And where do you expect Walters to fit in best? When you talked about him, he's got the hybrid game, attack, midfield. My gut feeling is he fits in there in the midfield where the Bayhawks struggled uh, at times this year. Um, Kyle Dixon did not have one of his better years, uh, <laughs> just put it mildly. Um, they actually moved Drew Westervelt to midfield and stayed just to try and bolster that group during the regular season. Do you see him fitting in more as a midfielder? I think he'll run out as a midfielder because if you think their attack is, is, is fairly set with Westervelt, um, Mundor, and Rubior, but I think he'll be a midfielder that will invert a lot and allow him to use his, his vision. What has improved immensely since he's become a professional cross player is his vision. When he played at Maryland under Dave Cottle, he was known as one of the better shooters in the nation, but he's developed the passing side of his game. That comes from playing indoor and all of his work, uh, playing the Canadian box game, and then just playing with so many Canadians, either in Rochester or in Hamilton. His ability to pass and run the two-man game is, is really strong. So I see him doing a lot of that in Chesapeake, either as a midfielder above the cage or as a midfielder behind the cage in the invert. As you mentioned, he played for Dave Cottle at the University of Maryland, was the number one pick in the 2006 MLL draft, has two championships to his name, including being in the 2008 championship weekend MVP when he was with Rochester, then won another title the following year uh, with Hamilton. So uh, midfielders last year for the Bayhawks, they looked down their stats, Kyle Dixon, Ben Hunt, Michael Kimmel, Matt Abbott, who really emerged as a star two-way player uh, this past year. Stephen Brooks were the guys who got most run, Kevin Cooper, uh, playing a little bit as well. So um, this really bolsters uh, that midfield unit, which, again, uh, was down last year. Um, but you said he can, he can play a little attack as well. So just, again, the additions of Mundorf, Walters, it's awful early on. Is this just a case of the strong getting stronger in your mind? Uh, I, I think so. I think that, and again, this goes back to a conversation happening immediately after that championship win. Dave Cottle said, we're going to get right back to work this week trying to figure out how to make this team better or at least keep things rolling in terms of wins, and I think he's done that. They've, they've figured out a way to, to manage away some of their, their older, more expensive players, the John Grant Juniors, the Casey Pals, um, and bring in some younger, uh, probably fresher guys, even though Mundor's been banged up and Walters has been in the league for a while. But, I mean, the additions don't just stop there. I mean, the, the idea that they get Brian McGill, a really young, talented defenseman, I love that pickup. Um, I think they're poised for exactly what they want, and another shot at the championship. And then the flip side of this, and, and it can't be ignored, is that Casey Powell is a Florida guy. I mean, everybody thinks of him as Syracuse, but he makes his home in Florida. He's really become the face of growing lacrosse in that area. So 
this is a good thing for the league and for the sport and for that new team in the Florida launch to get Casey Powell on their roster. And, and, and I would imagine, and I don't want to speak for Casey, I haven't spoken to him since hearing this trade, but he will play in more weeks uh, this season, I would imagine, because of that, because he's home. He won't have to travel uh, because, as we saw, he's in great shape. He can still play the game. I think in the past there's more logistics that kept him from playing uh, from the start of the season till the end. So the Florida launch still got the face of their franchise, arguably could be their assistant coach with, uh, with Stan Ross and, and a player that, that they can build around when, when marketing that team throughout the community. Well, and you mentioned it. I mean, this is as much, I would think, as all I think he can help them on the field as much a marketing move. Um, he is the face of lacrosse in Florida. So, but based on what you saw, uh, at Championship Weekend in particular, he didn't play a whole lot the last two years other than in some Championship Weekends, uh, first with Hamilton in 2011 and then last year with the Bayhawks. How much does he have? I mean, can he play, you know, 10 weeks? Can he play 14 weeks without the travel, the wear and tear? I mean, is this strictly, in your mind, I mean, maybe not <laughs> from Stan Ross's perspective, but when, when it's all said and done, will this be strictly a PR move? Will this be a move that, that actually makes them a legit you know, team that can contend in year one for one of the four spots at Champ Weekend, or not Champ Weekend, but one of the four playoff spots. I would not I would not even begin to say it's strictly a PR move. I think the obvious aspect without the logistics of travel, and what I saw from him in a Thursday night game against Boston that went to overtime, his first game back in the season was enough for me to see that he still has plenty of athleticism, energy, uh, to play in this league. I mean, he came out on an extremely hot night. I had trouble getting up and down the uh, the steps to the field, and, and he played uh, a fabulous game. So he is in, in, in all reports in great shape and, and has the ability to probably play through an entire season. Now, I wouldn't expect him to. I, w- I would see him maybe taking a week off here or there just to, to sort of remain healthy. Maybe that Dwayne Wade effect, if you want to use an NBA comparison. And, and this season... As I think I see it, there are, there are more holes to, to get an extra week here or there. Maybe he doesn't play in the All-Star game if he's nominated. There's that week off for the World Games. So I think that, that this season stacks up for him to maybe be, uh, if he can stay healthy, barring any you know serious injury, if it's terms of just wear and tear, I could see Casey Clow playing probably the most he's played in a while. Well, two huge names. uh Exchanging places today again. Former number one pick Joe Walters in 2008 Championship Weekend MVP going to the Bayhawks in exchange for you know the legend Casey Powell who joins the Florida launch in, in their inaugural season. Uh, Evan Washburn, thanks again for your time. Appreciate your thoughts on the trade and uh, as moves happen, I'm sure we'll be back in touch. Talk to you again soon. <laughs>